Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to this wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, a beautiful day where we are going to celebrate the faith journeys of two confirmands. Uh, two fine young men who uh, have driven me up a wall and also have been a pleasure to work with throughout the past year. My name is Pastor Uriah. I'm the licensed settled pastor here at PCCC. Uh, it is a pleasure to have all of you this morning. If you are guests, if you are members here, welcome to this space. A couple of announcements before we get started. Uh, since we do have so many guests, there will both be the order of worship is both on the screens and also in the bulletin. That includes any hymns that we are doing. So whatever your preference is, uh, you can also open up the hymnal if that is what you prefer. Uh, another quick announcement, uh, we have an announcement in the bulletin about a baptism, which will be, held, uh, will be happening, just not on May 21st. It got moved to June 25th, uh, the day after Shelley printed the bulletins, and so we were not going to reprint all the bulletins. I figured I would just announce that. That'd be another wonderful day to come and participate as well. Uh, council will be immediately after church. Let's go downstairs to the youth meeting room for that one. Uh, so if you're a council member, just follow the other council members if you don't know where you're going, and we'll all make it there. And then lastly, there's a fantastic sheet cake that uh, there's not quite enough of us regular members here to eat. So if you are visiting, please partake in the sheet cake afterwards. We left all the tables up as best we could. Uh, please stay for some coffee. Enjoy time with our confirmands. Are they both? They're not taken off, right? I know that was a slight concern. Is there no soccer today? We'll see. All right, that's all I've got. Uh, it was a pleasure to work on this service with the confirmants. There will be parts of the service that uh, they helped write. They will be helping lead us in worship today. Uh, yeah, it's going to be wonderful. And to include, the music was picked out both by the families and the confirmants. So please enjoy these wonderful songs. And let us rise and join in our first one, I Woke Up This Morning, number 85 in the hymnal. our custom here at PCCC that we go around and move about the sanctuary to say good morning, to pass the peace of Christ to one another. Uh, if you are uncomfortable with this and would prefer to remain socially distanced, please just remain in your pews. With that being said, let us pass the peace of Christ this morning.
As we make our way back to our seats, please be seated. So as people are making the last leg of the journey, uh, <laughs> let me explain a little bit about our call to worship today. Uh, Wednesday night was our final confirmation session, uh, and I know it's tradition uh, amongst this church at least. I kind of grew up with it, I think, in my church. It's been a while since I was confirmed. Uh, I heard that the tradition here was each confirmand writes their own statement of faith and has to have it approved by the council. Uh, that seemed a little outdated to me. Uh, so what we did is since we went together on this journey, we talked through and we wrote a statement of faith together, all three of us. And so we're going to do that as a call to worship style this morning. And with that, Grayson, go ahead and take us away. We believe in God. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And with that, I invite our choir forward for some special music.
Thank you, choir. Let us join now in our unison prayer for transformation and new life. Wonderful God, we gather today to celebrate the journey of two young men as they confirm their vows to you this day. As we celebrate today, we also remember and recognize times we too often look down upon our descendants. We blame and chastise the younger generations for their shortcomings, more often than lifting up their strengths and celebrating their achievements. Help us, we pray, to maintain open minds and recognize their value as the future of this world. You who called young prophets like Jeremiah will surely still call and have joy in these young souls today. Help us to share in this, we pray. Amen and amen. And friends, please receive these words of grace. Know that the same God who called Jeremiah is the same God who sent the Holy Spirit to the disciples on Pentecost. Each day is a new day to change our hearts and minds. We are not stuck in a rut or pinned in place so much that we cannot change our own views. God is with us. God is with these two we celebrate today. And God is with all those who come after us. Amen. The script. The scripture reading is from Jeremiah one through four, or chapter one. Mike ten, Jamie. My. Oh, here. And my scripture reading is Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you to a prophet to the nations. <clears throat> then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to, the, to whom I send you. And you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am only with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have to put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to see, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant.
The scripture reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Our gospel passage for the day is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here ends our gospel reading for the day. Before we uh, begin the sermon, that I, uh, this is the third iteration of the sermon, but before we begin that, I want to talk a little bit more about the scriptures, right? Uh, last week, as I was coming back up from Iowa, I didn't quite know yet if the confirmants were picking their own verses or if they were... Uh, being picked for them by me or by family, and so just in case, I wanted to have some picked out, uh, which those two that they read were the ones that came to mind for me. Uh, Grayson, I don't often get a chance to just speak one-on-one with people while they're here, but I really want you to remember Jeremiah and take it to heart. The Lord God is with you. You need not be afraid to speak. Maverick, I got one word for you. Do you know what it is? read. Both of these boys, both of these young men uh, are phenomenal. I really can't say enough good things about them. Uh, They are the future of this church. It has been a true pleasure to work with them over this last year, and uh, as I started with them, uh, I made a point to them that I don't know if a lot of people in this congregation recognize, and that's that uh, in many ways, I align more with them and their generation than I do with most of you who I serve. Uh, There's only a 10-year age difference between us versus the 20-year average or higher uh, between the rest of the congregation and me. Uh, At one point, we even got to talk about video games for a little bit. Uh, We could relate to each other because I also play video games. I learned that, uh, which one, who's not good at Minecraft? Was it Grayson? Yeah. Grayson's not that great at Minecraft, so if anybody needs to win at something. (laughs) Just play against him. I chose Jeremiah for Grayson as he tends to be very calm and quiet. And yet when he speaks, he has such a wisdom about him. I really want him to take away from this day that the Holy Spirit and God are with him from this day forward, just as they have always been. And he need not be afraid to raise up his voice for the God has put his words in his mouth. I chose Pentecost, uh, which we'll be celebrating for uh, Maverick. We'll be celebrating Pentecost in a couple weeks, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, Because the night of the Holy Spirit lesson, for whatever reason, Maverick just clicked. And that was his, his, and he's wearing red shoes. Oh my goodness. Uh, He'll forever remember that color, at least. But I could tell that that night, he really felt called to it. He really connected with the Holy Spirit, which as we considered the Trinity... Uh, the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, uh, Creator, uh, Savior, Holy Spirit, however you understand the Trinity, it's important that Maverick found one to connect with, and that he connected with one that is so deeply personal and within him, right, that he can feel within everyone else around him. That felt like a very holy moment and very important to his confirmation scripture. 
So I just want to explain that a little bit because I don't really go into that in this sermon. As I said, this is the third iteration, uh, so let's bear with me on it. Friends, we are gathered here this morning to celebrate an important milestone in the faith journeys of two of our fellow Christians here at PCCC. Today, they have decided, after learning more in depth about their faith, after learning more about what being a Christian means, and living out this faith intentionally, that they will renew their baptismal vows that were taken on their behalf while they were infants. And they will take charge of their own relationship with God. Throughout this past year, they have learned about how to use and read the Bible, the roles of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in the Holy Trinity, what it means to give back to one's community as they volunteered with the youth group at Sam 25 and continually helped out with Sunday school throughout this year. They have explored what prayer can look like, both in their individual lives and in our communal lives. They've attended plenty of services. They attended a council meeting and learned about how governance and politics work within the church. And they have put down their beliefs after all this in the statement of faith that we went through this morning as a congregation. And in short, there is no doubt in my mind that they are indeed ready for this amazing step in their journey. They are two fine young men with bright futures ahead of them, and we are lucky to count them among our congregation here at Peace. And with that, there are two points that I want us to take away today as the congregation that is participating in this covenant with them. First, I want us to recognize that this is not the beginning of their faith journey, nor is it the end. It may be the end of a chapter, but they are still in this narrative known as life. And they are still on the journey of their faith. This is not the end, nor is it the beginning, but it is a milestone on their faith journeys. Journeys that, I might add, we are all still on. As we go about the service of confirmation today, the words should feel familiar in a sense. Because these words echo the baptismal vows that we take in the United Church of Christ. Their faith journeys began the moment their parents took vow and sponsors took vows on their behalf. Each of our faith journeys began either when we were baptized as infants or when we first began exploring baptism as we grew older. Our journeys do have a clear end point, and it is not this day of confirmation. I would argue that it is the day we die, and this earthly faith journey transforms into a journey none of us can understand because we have not crossed that bridge yet. These confirmands up here today understand this, and they are acutely aware of how much they still have to learn. Even on Wednesday, we were still talking about things that they had questions about. We all still have so much to learn. None of us will ever know enough to deem our faith journeys over. And so I encourage you, this gathered body here, to confirm the vows of these two young men, to learn from them and their orientation towards their faiths. They hunger for more knowledge. It's been beautiful to see. They ask these really hard questions that I don't have answers for many times. We find them together. They trust that those questions come from the Holy Spirit within each of them. And that God knows them both personally and does not take their questions as personal offense. These two young men have grown so much in this last year. And may we try to grow even a quarter of the strides that they took in the next five years of our own faith journeys. Now my second point is around the promise that we are about to make as a congregation. We vow in baptism to be a part of the lives of the baptized, to help raise them in a Christian manner, to be of support to them and their parents, to make sure they know they are not alone in their journeys. Today, we will make the promise, as this gathered congregation, to be in continuing friendship with these two young men and to to continue to keep them in our prayers from this day forward. 
we promise as the congregation to be in relationship with them. They also make promises to participate in the life of this church. And it has been my experience as a young person these days that many congregations remember and focus on that promise, the one they make, the confirmands, rather than remembering and focusing on the congregation's promise. Far too often I hear the lament that young members get confirmed at here or any other church, and then they don't show back up. And to that I ask, what have we done as this congregation to live into those relationships with our young members post-confirmation. Continuing friendship and prayer does not imply that the friendship needs to only remain within this church building. What are these two young men involved in? What would it look like to go support our members in their extracurricular activities at school? What would it look like to learn about our youth outside of just what they can bring to the church Who are they? What do they believe in? What are their values? Can we learn about their dreams and hopes, their faith journey and the questions they struggle with? Can we meet them where they are at instead of expecting them to come to us, to this place, and feel welcomed because they were confirmed here? Relationships take work from both parties. Far too often, we neglect our end as a church and then wonder why those relationships fade away. As these confirmands continue their faith journeys today, it will be up to us to do our part in maintaining the church's relationship with them. I want us all to remember that and to take it to heart today. I'm going to share a very concrete example with you from my own personal stories. Last week, I went down to my home church in Iowa for the funeral of one of the most devout Christians I know, and her name was Verla Stegi. And it was amazing to be with people who had helped raise me, and I hadn't seen many of them in six years. While I was downstairs in the kitchen, talking with everyone, reminiscing, filling them in on my travels, and hearing about the happenings in town and at church, One of the members who had himself served churches before asked me a very pertinent question of why it was this funeral that I had come back for instead of others throughout the years. And I hadn't really thought about it, but being too prideful to just admit I didn't know, I gave a very convoluted answer. And now as I've reflected on it, I could break it down into two parts. First was simple logistics. I couldn't come home when I was in the army for a funeral unless it was a close family member. And with crazy, how crazy life had been these last few years, I'd not been able to break away and come down any of, to any of the other funerals I'd wanted to attend. But the second part was the far more impactful one, and that was relationship. You see, Verla was my Sunday school teacher for the class right before I started confirmation. As a lifelong educator and learner, she cared deeply about all of her students, whether at the school or at the church. She taught me things that no one else could just by her lived example and the care that she had shown. More than that, she continued to check in with me during my confirmation journey and throughout high school. And then when I left, when I was out of sight, out of mind to many people, what did this phenomenal woman do? She wrote me letters, and she would message me on Facebook throughout my time away, filling me in, letting me know I was still connected, that I was not alone. She kept me updated on life in the church, in the church that I loved and truly cared about, what was going on in my own life, too. She took that vow of confirmation from the congregation to heart, and I know without a doubt that she was indeed a friend to me, and that I was in her prayers because she kept that relationship alive and she didn't leave it just up to me. The vows our confirmands take today are very serious and believe me, they know this. As we practiced Wednesday night, that was very clear to me. How seriously will we as a church take our vows 
not only with these two youth before us, but all youth who walk through these doors. When will we let go of the lament that church isn't what it used to be and live into the celebrations of what it is today? How will we be in relationship with the next generation as their mentors and examples of how Christians can be in community? Take seriously, please, this vow that you make today because these two are the future of this church. Were it not for Verla and my relationship with her, I assure you, I would not be in this pulpit here today. A relationship with a church member, not my pastor, not my parents, not any other family member. It was my relationship with Verla that set me on a course of ministry. What could your relationship with a young person in this church lead to tomorrow? Remember this as we affirm the faith of Maverick and Grayson today and let it impact all of our actions going forward. May it be so, and amen. If we could now, uh, as many of us that can get through it without crying, please rise and join in Borning Cry, number 351 in the hymn. except for Bob Smith. He needs to come forward as well as the compromands. So let's go like right here. <laughs> you guys ready? <laughs> Friends in Christ, we all are received into the church throughout the sacrament of baptism. These people found nurture and support in the midst and family of Christ. Through prayer and study, 
They have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to, compl- uh, and to claim in our presence the covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Hear now these words from Scripture. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ alone being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built into for a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. Grace and the Maverick, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist the and evil, to know and show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able. If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? If so, please say, I promise, with the help of God. Amen. Friends, let us all rise, if you are comfortably able, to affirm our faith. Let us unite with the church in all times and places in confessing our faith in the triune God. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to go off the mic so we can have a little private prayer time. Let us pray together. Almighty God, who in baptism received these, your servants, into the church, forgave their sins and promised them eternal life, increase in them the gifts of your Holy Spirit, grant love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness towards all people, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in tensions, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things, thereby strengthen them in the ministry of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Will the parents and sponsors of these candidates please come forward at this time, as well as any council members gathered in the congregation. It's called a laying on of hand ceremony, if you didn't know. And it's very sacred, very holy. Grace in the Maverick, the God of mercies, multiply grace and peace in you. Enable you truly and faithfully to keep your vows. Defend you in every time of danger. Preserve you to the end. 
and finally bring you to rest with all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. Please keep your hands up. Let us join in a prayer of confirmation. We rejoice, O merciful God, with these people in the gift of the Holy Spirit and in the Spirit's power to awaken us to new truth and inspire us to venture into the fullness of life. We give you thanks they have been moved to affirm their baptism. Help them to live not for themselves, but for Christ and those whom Christ loves. Keep them steady and abounding in hope, never giving up, pressing towards the goal of life with you and Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Grace and Maverick, <laughs> by your baptism, you're made one with us in the body of Christ, this church. Look behind you real quick. All of these here gathered with you. And now out of the crowd, this is your family now. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. We celebrate your presence in the household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of the family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God, and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves the community of the world? If so, please say, I promise, with the help of God. Amen. And please rise. Let this congregation then rise, and as members of PCCC Shawano, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We promise you our continuing friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Amen. A round of applause. And this time, the family and council, please. Welcome our newest members of Christ Church. Hi. Circle through and handshake. Sorry, I could have been clearer about that. <laughs> you may be seated, congregation. Nope, you guys, well, you guys are gone. You two aren't. <laughs> Grace and Maverick, on behalf of PCCC, please receive, and the conference. Uh, this is a letter from Reverend Franz Reisbert, who is our conference minister, your, uh, your confirmation certificates. Amen. Friends, please receive this invitation to generosity. It is only through your generous gifts that this church is sustained. It is through this church that this next generation of Christians has been formed and confirmed on this day. It is because of your generosity that those who follow them will continue to receive the education and experiences they need to grow into their faith of Christ. Let us participate in supporting our next generation through our offering today.
Let's rise and join our doxology. Let us join our unison prayer of dedication. Teaching God, may these gifts be used to form all of us in this church. May we continue to grow in our faiths, continue to learn new and engaging lessons, and continue to be a beacon of light for those who come after us. Amen. And let us join now in hymn number 547, Amazing Grace. And please be seated. Special note about this uh, service, two parts, uh, two notes rather. Uh, one, this is our Conferman's first communion service, a uh, very sacred and holy moment. Uh, and two, if you remember in the confirmation vows that they just took, they said they would be of service to the church. So if nothing else, nobody can say that they were not of service because they're going to serve you communion today. Let us partake now. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene on that same day, sat at the table with two disciples, 
and was made known to them through the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, men and women, youth and children, from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about Christ's table. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty. Holy and mercy is your glory. God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Friends, we remember that on the right of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve, eve of death, Jesus gathered the disciples for the feast of Passover. Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Let us pray now the prayer Jesus has taught us, saying, Here at Peace, we've been participating in a tradition now for well over a year that fits very well for today. Uh, as you receive your wafer of bread, please take out of it on your own time to simulate that we are each on our individual faith journeys. Uh, if you feel so called to wait, I will give us instructions at the end. Uh, but the symbolism and the theology behind that is just beautiful as we consider the faith journeys these two have been on. And then as you receive the cup, uh, after the bread, please wait, and we will partake together. This is to simulate that even though we are on our individual face journeys, we don't go about them alone. They take place in this community with one another. And one last note, we do not practice gatekeeping or barriers here at this church. This table is open for any and all. Please come for all things are ready.
you have not done so yet, the body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. The new covenant made in Christ's blood, taken for the first time with our newest full members of Peace UCC. Take and drink. And let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gifts of our Savior's presence and the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, amen and amen. Let us rise and join now in our closing hymn, Great Work Has God Begun in You.
Amen. A couple closing announcements. Reminder, there's cake. Please save for coffee. It'll be wonderful. Uh, council will be meeting in the meeting room downstairs. And then the family and the boys, just give us some time up here real quick uh, for pictures right after service. And then they'll be right out for cake cutting, and unless it's already being cut. Uh, <laughs> and we can serve it. So with that being said, please, please receive this benediction, this blessing. On this day, may you know you are richly blessed. May you go forth professing faith with the assurance you are part of a holy community. And may you forever feel the love of God in your hearts. Go in peace, friends, and amen.